Arbindu. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now into the Q&A part of this morning's program. I'd like to invite up on stage Yua Jun and Arubindu, who will be taking questions from the floor. Um, for those of you who do have questions, there is a microphone in the middle of the room. We ask that you please state your name and organization that you represent before you ask your question. So if you have any questions. Am I allowed to ask? <laughs> you ask a question. <coughs> Uh, first of all, it's um, Manu Bhaskar um, from the Centennial Group. I'd first like to congratulate the SNU and Professor Sandro and uh, June for introducing the first really comprehensive set of uh, institutional expectations in the next generation of Singapore. Thank you. Uh, I, I just have a very simple question. Uh, the uh, inflation expectations that comes out of the survey, uh, the current one seems possible because it's very highly correlated with current inflation, but the long term is expected inflation rate of about 5.2% seems extraordinarily high given the record of inflation in Singapore, given expectations of currency expect, uh, appreciation in the future and so on. So I'm a bit puzzled by that. I'm just wondering whether um, there's been some explanation for it. If you ex assume that that is correct, then the true rate of uh, real interest rate in Singapore is extraordinarily low and we should see economic agents engaging in far more speculative behavior, far, more, far greater efforts to uh, get around this negative interest rate. So I just want to get a sense from you of how, how you react to that. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for the question. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we have to put this into perspective, uh, as I mentioned in, in the presentation as well, that we have to look at the long-term inflation expectations, putting the benchmark of the current inflation expectation into perspective. So from, from 4.62, it's 5.2. So that differential is probably more important than the number itself. Now, it can also be true that, that there is a lot of uncertainty into the picture. I and mean, part of this could be media as well, who, who is stirring up news about the Eurozone situation right now. And that might have fed back into having uh, extraordinarily high inflation rate. And I completely agree that given uh, that, that this actually also has an implication on the real interest rate, but one of the things to look into is whether there are any instruments out in the market which will be able to corroborate these numbers. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there is a, uh, in the US and, and also in Europe, there is an inflation protected bond which does give you some idea about what the market's perception is. And then the number will be probably better benchmarked than what we have now. So we are going to use this going forward, as, as Professor Arnold also mentioned, that we are uh, going to look at this every quarter and see how these numbers actually change over time. So that will give us a better benchmark of what exactly is the true inflation expectations in five years from now. Thank you. I just wonder, uh, one, one clear point that really stands out for me is that that the better informed the individual, the higher the inflation expectation in both surveys. I wonder to what extent that is due to the current phase of the business cycle. Now imagine in a different phase of the business cycle where inflation is not only low but declining and growth is strong, it's picking up. The better informed individual may have lower inflation expectation than general public. Under those uh, conditions. So therefore, I wonder, so the correlation between information, information flow, communication, to what extent that's really, to, to some extent, uh, 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 affected by the specific phase of this cycle that we need. Yeah, uh, I think, I think that's, that's very much possible because these two uh, waves are very close together. Uh, going f into future, I think we are going to put it in, in March around the same time of every year. We wanted to get the two out so that we want to see what type of differential the two, two time periods actually have. But yes, going into the future, we will be able to see and compare what type of business cycle effects does this particular inflation expectations have. Thanks. I want to add something. Uh, I think uh, Manu asked a very important question, which is, you know, uh, you know how reliable, how accurate it is uh, inflation expectations. Uh, from my perspective, I really believe these are the expectation from the ground level. We are not asking 
who are expert. They are the household, average household, make a decision about their consumption pattern, make a, decision, make a consumption decision. And therefore, uh, the number they reported, we should uh, trust. And uh, uh, the central bank, the central bank should take it, you know, uh, as uh, you know, yeah, input for their you know, monetary policy. Um, it's likely that uh, the uh, uh, the number we collected may not as accurate as a survey of a professional forecast. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, it's uh, really uh, the public's view, and hence we should respect that. My name is Anthony from Mastercard. Um, but would it be then that if you when you continue the trend and you ask the respondents, that the uh, expectation will probably lag behind true inflation because this is a respondent and generally human nature tends to be a bit more pessimistic in their forward view. So is, would that be the trend where the expectation would always be a higher compared to actual inflation? Well, think about it, you know, uh, if, if the central bank <coughs> really communicates very well their target to the public, we should expect a reasonable, stable, long-run inflation expectation. And 5.2% is not what a central bank would like to see. I guess that's true. Uh, I ask uh, Mr. Adam Robinson. You know, 5.2 is very high. I was very, I was a little worried for when I when I first saw data for September. Um, if we really want to see a very effective uh, uh, inflation anchoring, this long run inflation should be insensitive to incoming data, uh, which mostly are supply shocks. Luckily, what we have We've seen in, the, in these two surveys that we, you know, the five-year uh, index dropped a little bit. It means that uh, is, you know, we, are, we don't need to worry that much uh, with respect to the uh, uh, short-term noise. So I don't know whether or not I answered that question, but uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe there's some uh, pessimistic uh, you know, argument. Um, but, uh, in long run, this uh, index should be very insensitive to to the uh, to the noise uh, coming from uh, you know, uh, short term statistics. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, my name is Rajan Govil. I work at BSI Bank. A question for you on communication. Uh, in Singapore, essentially, the uh, monetary policy tool is the exchange rate. Uh, unlike in other countries where you have interest rates. So how do you expect them to communicate that? Uh, and given the information you have and the expectations to try to communicate something via the exchange rate, uh, obviously that has other senior implications in terms of capital flows potentially and so on. So how are you going to resolve that issue? Um, the second question I have is more from the survey, um, which uh, I'm not particularly sure, but it seemed to me the weightage given to the exchange rate uh, in the survey, uh, informing inflation expectations a little too low. But there's only one point where you show a 10% significance uh, when the coefficient is pretty high. Thanks, thanks a lot for the question. Actually, uh, we uh, don't give separate weightage to inflation, uh, the, ex uh, the exchange rate. It just shows up in our regression that, well, that tends to play an important role in one of the, one of the forecasts that we have. But uh, you're absolutely right. Here, of course, our tool for policies really through exchange rate. So what we could do is not really anchor uh, interest rate down as much as inflation down. So inflation could also play an important role in, in the public's perception that this is the target inflation rate that is that the that, that, uh, monetary policy is actually looking into. Now that number, now the next question will be how credible is that particular information when it gets put out there uh, to the general public. Now they will have to see a feedback loop 
to see that this is really something that is actively being pursued. So, so to answer that question, I think there is still, even though we don't have clear monetary policy, there is still a way of anchoring beliefs in among among individual uh, who are economic agents. Now, to uh, so I think that's the two answer the questions that you had. I'm Marcello Fontana from my way catch a little startup here in Singapore, and the question that I have is uh, whether you have observed uh, or you expect to observe in the future a systematic correlation between your measures of uncertainty and disagreement and the volatility of the constituencies of the uh, inflation index uh, and the currencies. Do you expect to see like some systematic associations between those measures? I think we would if we have a longer uh, series of how exactly it has progressed over time. Uh, for now, we are just looking at two waves. So, so we see some relationship, but not a long enough data to look at the correlation between, between the two. But indeed, an uncertainty as well as their expectation of what the future is going to look like does play an important role. In particular, the current inflation rate plays a very, very significant role in forecasting the future one. I'm Marcus from Zappa. Um, I'm wondering because uh, I believe uh, MAS must have its own way of assessing the uh, inflation expectation uh, at the moment. So, what is the gap that you are looking to uh, plug with your new projects? Everybody has their own inflation expectations. Whether or not you are household, you are the, you are the firm, and you are central bank. And MAS use a you know, professional forecaster, and uh, I believe actually, <coughs> excuse me, past research have suggested that all these you know uh, inflation expectations are important for central bank to calibrate their monetary policy, especially for helping them to predict the future inflations. So we have to, in Singapore context, we don't have many alternatives. We have to see you know, uh, uh, whether or not they are all useful and which one is more useful. This is some you know, uh, open question, open beach to explore. Um, so we really don't, we are not able to answer your question at the moment. This is basically, basically the second survey. And it's probably more comprehensive survey than the uh, survey of a professional forecast. If we have no more questions to ask, you please put your hands together. You sure I appreciate it. And at this time, I would like to invite Professor Junyu up on stage, please, to present a token of appreciation to our guest of honor, Mr. Edward Lawrence.